This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, it's very nice to see so many people came out. Yeah, probably everybody must be watching live, but um, it's already uh, almost, almost a week before Pesach. So uh, we want to start thinking about the Yom Tif and uh, what the Yom Tif means to us and what we could glean from this uh, Holy Chag. We know, uh, very interestingly, the Torah has an unusual description for the Yom Tif of Pesach. And that is, Pesach in the Chumash is called Shabbos. It's called Shabbos. When it talks about the mitzvah of Sfirah Salimah, it says, Usfartem lachem mimachras ha-Shabbos. We start counting Sfirah the day after Shabbos. What do you mean the day after Shabbos? That's what the uh, Tzadokim, they would always start counting Sfirah on a Sunday. But our Masoira is, we always start counting Sfirah the day after Pesach. That means the Torah is calling Pesach Shabbos. Why in the world would the Torah call Pesach Shabbos? It's not Shabbos, it's Pesach. Happens to be this year Pesach is Shabbos. But Pesach is not Shabbos, Pesach is Pesach. I mean, the Torah doesn't call Purim uh, Tishabav, the Torah doesn't call Simchas Torah Tzayim Gedalia. I mean, every day has its own name, no reason to uh, confuse one day with another day. So why would the Torah refer to Pesach as Shabbos? The Mesha Chachma, Rameir Simcha of Dvinsk, makes uh, a, an amazing observation that there's a certain terminology that the Torah uses by Pesach that it does not use by any other Yom Tif, and that is the expression of Shmira. The Torah says in Parshas Boi, Parak Yud Beis, Pasuk Yud Zayin, Ushmartem es ha'avoida hazois, you should guard this avoida. And then the Pasuk says, Ushmartem es hadavar hazeh. And the pas- in Parshas Mishpatim it says, Chag HaMatzois Tishmar. Keeps on using the expression of Shmira. Shmira, guard, guard, guard. In Parshas Kisisa it says, Shamar Chodesh HaAviv. So we see the Torah repeats again and again and again the concept of Shmira, guard, guard. It doesn't say Shmira by Sukkot, it doesn't say it by any other Yom Tif. By Pesach it constantly reiterates, guard, 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 guard. Rushmartem Es HaMatzois. The only other day and the other, only other mitzvah where the Torah uses this language, Shmira, so many times is, of course, Shabbos. The Shamru B'nai Yisrael es HaShabbos. Shamar es Yom HaShabbos. In Parshas Kisisa, three times it says, Shamar es HaShabbos. Shamar es HaShabbos. Shamar es HaShabbos. In Parshas Bahar. In Parshas Kedoshim. Es Shabsoisai Tishmari. No other days of the year do we have to be Shomer. Normally the Torah says as Chag Hasukos Tasa. You should do it. You should make it. You got to make your sukkah. You got to take the Dalad Minim positive. But when it comes to the Yom Tov of Pesach, Ushmartem es Hamatzos Shamar es Chodesh Aviv Chag Hamatzos Tishmar, like it says by Shabbos so many times, as Shabsoi say Tishmaru v'Shamar v'Nei Yisrael sa Shabbos. So we see this uh, common denominator of Pesach and Shabbos. They both require Shmira. And says Rameir Simcha, that is in fact why Pesach is referred to as Shabbos, because they share this common feature. Still, we have to understand why. Why does the Torah say Shamar, Shmira, by both of these days? And why would you call Pesach Shabbos? Rameir Simcha says that the fact that the Torah uses the word Shmira by Pesach has a halachic implication. And that is, we know by Shabbos, Shabbos is a Zman Gram, it's definitely caused by time, it starts only the seventh day of the week. Do women have to make Kiddush on Shabbos? Of course, they're Chayv and Kiddush. Why are they Chayv and Kiddush? But it's a Mitzvah that says Shazman Gram. The answer is Zachar Vishamar. Since they're Chayv and Shmira, since they can't violate the Lavin, Mimela, they're Chayv in the Mitzvah that says as well, even though there's Zman Gram. Says Rav Meir Simcha, the same thing with Pesach. The reason why the Torah reiterates again and again and again and again, Vishamru, Shamar, is because it wants to classify that in general, you know what Pesach needs? Shmira. Pesach is a love. Doesn't matter that eating a, a matzah is a positive command. It's categorized as a love. And therefore women are chayev. That's why Chazal Darshan, anyone who's not to eat chametz, has to eat matzah. Women are chayiv in the mitzvahs of Pesach. You know why? Because what is Pesach? It's a love, shmira. The same way women are chayiv in Shabbos, even though it says zachar, 
because primarily Shabbos requires Shmira. Ushmatim es Shabbos. Tar says many many times says as Shabbos I say to Shmiru v'shomnei so as Shabbos and therefore women we know are chayiv in all laven and therefore they're chayiv in Shabbos so too women will be chayiv in Pesach why but but okay I understand matzah because the Torah says don't eat chametz eat matzah so Chazal Darshan whoever's not to eat chametz has to eat matzah and I get they'll be chayiv in Dalit Koisos because it's a mitzvah derabanan and we use the rule afhim hoyu boisay hanes. But why would women be chayiv in Sipur Yitzhiz Mitzrayim? Sipur Yitzhiz Mitzrayim really has no specific reason to obligate a woman, right? It's a Zman Grama. In fact, the Ramam implies women are not chayiv in Sipur Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. But the Sefer HaChinuch says that women are chayiv in Sipur Yitzhiz Why? Why? They don't have to sin the sukkah. They don't have to take Dalad Minim. Why should they, have to, why should they read Haggadah? The answer is, you know what Pesach is? And this is what we're suggesting based on Meir Simcha. Pesach is Olav. It's Vishamru. Because the Torah reiterates again and again and again, Shmira, to teach you that Pesach is like Shabbos. Just like women are chayv and Shabbos, because Shabbos is primarily Olav, Shmira. So too, Pesach is generally Olav. It requires Shmira. But we want to try to delve in exactly what is the connection between Pesach and Shabbos. Why refer to Pesach as Shabbos? Can we look at the Gemara Masech Shabbos? Daf Chav Gimel Amud Beis. Boy Rava, Rava asked the following question: Ner Chanukah v'Kiddush Hayom. Okay, we're going to talk tonight a little bit about Chanukah. I know that's what's on your mind. I know everybody's really thinking about Chanukah these days. But we're going to talk about Chanukah. You have uh, limited funds. You have five dollars to your name. You could either buy Ner Chanukah or a bottle of wine for a Kiddush Day. Now, Kiddush Friday night obviously takes precedence over Kiddush Fr- uh, Shabbos day and over Ner Hanukkah because Kiddush Friday night is Dairaisa. Dairaisa. That's why, by the way, you need to drink more of the Kiddush Friday night than Shabbos day. And this is, if I will speak out very quickly, this year, um, normally Revius for a Shir Drabba, known as 3.3 ounces, according to Rabbi Moshe. So normally for Dalit Koisas, the Kois needs to contain at least 3.3 ounces. You need to drink the majority. But this year, the first night of Pesach is Friday night. Kiddush Friday night is Doi Raisa. For the shear of a Kois Doi Raisa is much more than 3.3 ounces. It's 4.4, according to Rav Moshe. So you have to drink, for the first Kois of Kiddush Friday night, you need a bigger Kois and you need to drink more. It's important to know that. But the Gemara wants to know if you have limited funds. Either you could buy Ner Hanukkah or you could buy Kiddush Shabbos Day. What takes precedence? Says the Gemara, Mahu. Kiddush Hayyim Lifted Tadir. Do you say Kiddush takes precedence because it's more frequent? You make Kiddush every week. I deal with Ner Chanukah Adif. Mishum Pursum Menisa. Ner Chanukah takes precedence. Why? Pursum Menisa. Chanukah. You want to publicize the miracle that Hashem saved us. So the, these are the. This is what you have to put on the scales. What has priority? Pursum Menisa or Tadir? So I was. This Gemara shocks me. Whenever I learn this Gemara, I'm startled. Here you have an Amorah by the name of Rava, and he's able to weigh in his mind Tadir. I mean, ask me, how much does Tadir weigh? I don't know. How much does, how much does Pursume Nisa weigh? How am I supposed to be able to evaluate the, the respective weights of a Svara of Tadir and a Svara of Pursume Nisa? But Rava, in his tremendous Shikol Hadas, is able to know Tadir weighs this, is this important? And Pursume Nisa is this important? And Rava says, I'm, I'm, in, I'm baffled. I don't know which one is more valuable. That to me is mind-boggling. To be able to have such clear Torah vision, to weigh the svaras of Tadir and Pursume Nisa, I'm shaking from that. And I'm shaking even more from what Rava said like this. Basar de Ibai Hadar Pashta. After he weighed it, he was able to say definitively, Ner Chanuka Adif Mishum Persume Nisa. Ner Chanuka is there because of Persume Nisa. How does he know Persume Nisa is better? He, he's not bringing a raya from Shas. He's not saying, Oh, I got the, I, I know Persume Nisa because there's a Mishnah. It's he's sitting there weighing Tadir, Persume Nisa, Tadir. And after an hour, he says, You know what? Persume Nisa is more important. Mm-hmm. How does he know? He knows. He knows. Rava, with all of his tremendous Torah knowledge, it's so filtering through his system. It's so coursing through his veins. You see, that's, that's 
the difference between us and Rava. Obviously, the difference is a million light years away. I say this very seriously. We could learn a lot. We could come to a shir. We could enjoy it. But how much is it really coursing in the blood system? How much is it part of us? To Rava, it was so ingrained in his personality that after pondering the issue, he said, that's it. Persume Nisa is greater than Tadir. It's, it's, if you think about it, it's unbelievable. Anyway, so Rava came to that conclusion that Persume Nisa is more valuable than Tadir, and therefore if you have five bucks to your name, you can either buy Ner Hanukkah or a wine for Kiddush Day. Ner Hanukkah Adif. Okay? Fine. We come to the next halacha, put that in your back pocket for a minute. The Rambam wants to know about Ner Hanukkah. How far do you go to have to buy? Now ask your child. Let's say somebody is very poor. They don't have too much money. Let's say they don't have any money. They can't afford a lulav and esrog. Do you need to sell your clothing to buy a lulav and esrog? No. Mm-hmm. Let's say you don't have tefillin. Mm-hmm. But you have a pair of pants. You need to sell your pants to buy tefillin? No. Let's say you don't have a sukkah. The only way to get a sukkah is you sell your socks, you sell your shoes. You don't have to. You only have to spend the fifth of your money to buy a mikvah. <coughs> Says the Rambam, their chadikah is different. Even if you can't afford to put food on the table, you need to beg, you need to borrow, and you need to get a hold. Sell your garment. Sell your garment and buy the Ner Hanukkah. You don't have to do that for any mitzvah in the Torah. For Ner Hanukkah, it's so beloved, it's so dear, you need to sell your clothing to get a hold of Ner Hanukkah. Yeah? Good? Okay, good. Comes the Magad Mishnah. Magad Mishnah, which birdie told the Rambam you need to sell your clothing to buy Ner Hanukkah? You don't have to do it to buy tefillin, you don't have to do it to buy a talus, you don't have to do it to get a sukkah. So who told the Rambam you have to do it for Ner Hanukkah? Says the, Ra- says the Magad Mishnah, you know where the Rambam got it from? Because <coughs> we know there's another Rambam by, now we're, now we're done with Hanukkah for a minute, but there's another Rambam by Hilchaz Chametz Matzah, Perek Zayin Zayin. The Rambam says, if you can't afford to buy Dalet Koisais, you need to sell your clothing and beg, borrow to get Dalet Koisais. Listen here, this is the key to the shir. Says the Magad Mishnah, why do you need to sell your clothing to buy Dalit Koisos? You don't have to do it to put on tefillin. You don't have to do it to be Mekayim any mitzvah on the Torah. Why Dalit Koisos? Says the Magad Mishnah, Dalit Koisos is Persume Nisa. When you do mitzvahs, they're just Asiyas HaMitzvah. Dalit Koisos, you're publicizing the miracle. Whenever you need to publicize a miracle, the obligation is much stronger. And therefore you need to sell your clothing to buy Dalit Koisos. Says the Magad Mishnah, listen carefully. If you need to sell your clothing to buy Dalit, Dalit Koisais, Kol Shikain, all the more so you need to sell your clothing to get Ner Hanukkah. Because if you need to sell your clothing to buy Dalit Koisais, you certainly need to sell your clothing to get Ner Hanukkah. Because Ner Hanukkah is even more important than Kiddush Hayoim on Shabbos. So if you need to sell your clothing to get Dalit Koisos, you certainly need to sell your clothing to buy Ner Hanukkah. So all the Achroinim ask, the Lecha Mishnah, Shalas Shivas Avnei Nezer, Shalas Shivas Shivas Yaakov, what's the Koshikain? Why does the Magad Mishnah say that if you need to sell your clothing to get Dalit Koisos, you certainly need to sell your clothing to get Ner Hanukkah? If Dalit Koisos is Pursume Nisa, then Ner Hanukkah is also Pursume Nisa. So it's not a kosher cane, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same. It's called a mamatzinu. But why would the Magad Mishnah use the terminology and the principle of kosher cane, kavachoyim? It's not a kavachoyim there. They're both Pursume Nisa. I mean, why would the Magad Mishnah say, you know how the Rambam knows you need to sell your clothing to buy Ner Hanukkah, but since you need to sell your clothing to buy Dalit Koisa, you certainly need to sell your clothing to buy Ner Hanukkah. It's not a kosher cane. It's not a kavachoyim. It's the exact same case. Let the Magad Mishnah just say, since the Rambam feels you need to sell your clothing for Dalit Koisa, you certainly need to sell your clothing for... You, you, you also need to sell your clothing for uh, Ner Hanukkah. It's the same thing. But why kosher cane? Why, why certainly? Why certainly? I want to speak out a question now, a, a very important question, a fundamental question. And when you, when you think of it, you're going to be kicking yourself. How come I never thought of this question? The Gemara says you have five bucks. You can either buy wine for Kiddush Shabbos Day, or you could buy Dalet Koisis. Excuse me, you could buy Ner Hanukkah. 
The Gemara says, what takes precedence? Ner Chanukah, why? Persume Nisa. Everybody knows Ner Chanukah is Persume Nisa. Why is there no Persume Nisa for Kiddush Shabbos Day? Why, why is there no Persume Nisa for Kiddush Shabbos Day? What are you doing when you make Kiddush Shabbos Day? You're declaring that Hashem created the world. That wasn't a miracle? When Hashem created the world, that wasn't miraculous? Says Avne Nezer, to say that's not miraculous, I'll read to you his words. Avne Nezer writes, The Heluga Avne Nezer and Archaim Simon Tufkov Aleph, the Avne Nezer writes, Not only is it a miracle, says Avne Nezer, he says, Haloi Chidush Hoilam Yesh Mayayin, right? When Hashem created the world, it was, as they say in Latin, ex nihilo, Yesh Mayayin, something out of nothing. Ein Yoiser Pela Minisim Shayisim It's a bigger miracle. Is Yoiser Pela is a greater miracle? So Briyas Olam is a greater miracle than Yitzchak Mitzrayim. So why wouldn't we say Fakarat? Say you should get wine for Shabbos Day because the Pursum Nisa making Kiddush is more important than the Pursum Nisa of Hanukkah. In fact, Shabbos is Doiraisa. The nace of Shabbos, Briyas Olam, requires a Shabbos which is Dairaisa. Ner Chanukah is only Drabanan. So why wouldn't the Gemara say that Ner Sh- um, Kiddush Hayyim is more important? Briyas Olam is not a miracle. The creation of the world is not a miracle. So I'll read to you the Lashon of the Shvas Yaakov. Shvas Yaakov says, He says, Hogam be Kiddush Hayyim. Shvas Yaakov, Chelek Gimel, Sementes, number 10, in the middle of the piece. We testify that Hashem created the world. There's no greater miracle. So if Briyas Olam is a greater miracle, then why would we say, Oh, Ner Chanukah comes from Pursume Nisa. Hello. We mean Pursume Nisa. Kiddush Hayyim is a much, is a much bigger mir- miracle. Briyas Olam is a bigger miracle. Right? It's good kasha. Zach, it's good kasha? It's yeah. awesome, right? It's amazing. The question, I would say, is that... that you like the question, or you know? Yeah? yeah? I'm rephrasing. You want to say over the kasha? The, the kasha is that Pesach... Uh, no, Pesach. nothing to do with Pesach. No, no Pesach. Kiddush Hayom for Pesach is... Pesach. No, no, Kiddush Hayom or Shabbos. The kasha is... Before you answer the question, you have to know what the question is, right? The kasha is Kiddush Hayom... Of Shabbos day, the Gemara says there's no Pursume Nisa, and therefore Ner Chanukah comes first. Why is there no Pursume Nisa Shabbos day? No, I'm not talking about Pesach yet. I'm not talking about Pesach. I'm talking about, the Gemara says, Kiddush Hayyim Shabbos day is secondary to Ner Chanukah. Why? Pursume Nisa of Shabbos day. What? What? And Shabbos day is nothing. You got to do it. So when you're doing it, it's for Sumei Nisa. You're saying, Zorch Zerma Shabbos Akadja, Shesh Yom Tavai. Hanukkah candles you put in the window so everybody can see. When you're doing Kiddush, you're doing it at home. Yeah, but it's not. Okay. So it's more individual. Okay, good. Good. But why does the Gemara say then, and how about, how about um, Dalit Kaisais? That's the Shaila. Okay, we're going to come to that. Let's, let's get that. Rabbi said this Shabbos is, um, is Shabbos Haggadah. Okay? And that's why we have very nice posters somewhere that say that everyone needs to be here at 6 p.m. It's streaming live now, so everyone out there, they could come to the shul 6 p.m. sharp. We start sharp, end sharp. No promises yet. But... Um, we cordially invite everybody to join us um, for Shabbos Haggadah, Joshua. Why is it called Shabbos Haggadah? Well, the Torah tells us the reason is a great miracle happened. Because Hashem commanded us to prepare the Karim Pesach that year on the 10th day of the month. It says, Now we know that the Pesach that year that we left Mitzrayim was on what day of the of week? What day of the week was Pesach the year we left Mitzrayim? Everybody knows it was a Thursday, right? We left on a Thursday, Shavuos, HaKalmoidim, Shabbos Shabbos, Nitna Taira, and the famous Kasha of the Magen Avram, that, makes, that means the Torah was given on the 51st day of the Oymah. Okay? So we left Mitzrayim on Thursday, the Torah was given 51 days later on Shabbos. Hashem told us to take the Karim Pesach on the 10th. The 10th was what day of the week? Shabbos! Shabbos. And we take the sheep, 
and the sheep is baying and making all those noises. And the Mitzrayim said, what are you doing with our gods? And the Jews said, we're taking your god and we're going to slaughter it in a few days from now. And, the, and the, it says in the Torah, Vahayu, Shineam Keos. Their teeth, they were gnashing their teeth. They were gnashing their teeth. I once heard, I'll say B'Shem Amr, I once heard from Avetan Feiner, a beautiful word on this. We say to the Rosh and the Haggadah, Ilu at Ilu HaYashem Lai HaYanigal. Tell him I said over. Ilu HaYashem Lai HaYanigal. If he was there, he wouldn't have, what do we do to Rosh? We bang out his teeth. Why are we banging out his teeth? Because the Torah says that all the Mitzrayim, when they saw us about to shech their gods, they were like gnashing their teeth. So we tell the Rosh, if you were a Mitzrayim, you'd be like one of those Rosham of the Mitzrayim who were Chaos as Shinaim. Okay. But the Torah says, that's why it's called Shabbos Haggadah. Why is it called Shabbos Haggadah? Because of this miracle that even though we were shechting their gods, they didn't touch us. And therefore on that great, on every year on Shabbos Haggadah, we call it Shabbos Haggadah. So, why is that still? That's, so everyone... Every, that Shabbos was still in Mitzrayim. Yeah. So I would say the Shabbos Haggadah would have been the first Shabbos that went out of Mitzrayim. But that, that would, should be in other words, it's Shabbos a commemoration of a miracle. It's a commemoration of a miracle. Mm-hmm. We're commemorating the miracle that occurred. So, so everybody and their first cousin asks yeah. that, wait a second, this is Judaism. In Judaism, when we commemorate miracles... We don't commemorate the day of the week. Commemorate the day of the month, right? Let me introduce you to something called Rosh Hashanah, which is the first of Tishrei, and Yom Kippur, which is the tenth of Tishrei, and Sukkot, which is the fifteenth of Tishrei, and Hanukkah, which is the twenty-fifth day of Kislev, and Asar Abateves, which is the tenth day of Teves, and Purim, which is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of Adar, and Pesach, and Shavuos, and every other miracle ever commemorated is by the day of the month. And all of a sudden, we're commemorating a miracle by the day of the week, Shabbos Haggadah. So you should celebrate the 10th day of Nisan, not the Shabbos Haggadah. Not the Shabbos Haggadah. And it's not because it's my mother's birthday on Shabbos Haggadah. That's not the reason. I have to, I have to get in my mother also, right? So... Why do we commemorate the day of the week? Why not the day of the month? That's the kasha all the achroinim ask. Comes the Bach. Comes the Bach. And the Bach says, I, very interesting, the Bach writes in number seven, I, I received a tradition about this. And my tradition is that we know that Klai Yisrael entered Eretz Yisrael on the 10th day of Nisan. They crossed the Yadin on the 10th day of Nisan. If we're going to commemorate the miracle of, Shav, of this of this great event on the 10th day of Nisan, later on in history, people are going to mistakenly think what we're commemorating is the entrance to Eretz Yisrael. So in order to avoid the confusion, we have to divert from our normal practice and we commemorate the day of the week. Says This is the Bach, what the Bach says, he has this tradition. What's most interesting is, if you look in the Taz, and uh, those who have been listening to Shuram know, how's the Taz related to the Bach? Taz is the Bach's son-in-law, and uh, I'm not going to tell you how the shilich was made. I might say that for the Shabbos Agado Drasha. But the Taz writes that he heard a beautiful reason to this kasha of why we commemorate the day of the month and not the day, the day of the week and not the day of the month. He heard it from Rabbi Moshe Harif. He says the same answer. Look what he writes. And I, he got a tizel of name Mori Vichami, and I told my father-in-law the kilse, and he praised it. He liked it. No kidding, he liked it. He, he wrote it in the Bach without attributing it to anybody. So presumably he knew it before his son-in-law told him. And when his son-in-law told him, you know, he smiled like a father-in-law does when you tell him Dvar Torah. He didn't say, are you kidding me? I know that already. And, uh, but very interestingly, the Bach uh, writes the same answer here. The Bach an- a- uh, um, brings the same answer that the Taz says he told the Bach and the Bach liked it. Okay. <clears throat> so interesting that the reason why we call it Shabbos Haggadah is because to avoid confusion. People are going to think that if we would celebrate the day of the month, people are not going to realize the reason. Therefore, we have to change it to the day of the week. Sounds very difficult. I mean, this is, uh, that's not how we operate. We don't commemorate days of the week. We commemorate days of the month. Well, what's the, there, there's got to be something more here of why do we specifically commemorate the Shabbos, instead of the 10th day of Tishrei. Comes the Shavos Yaakov, and comes the Avnei Nezer, and they tell us a very important principle. And that is, back to the question. 
The Gemara says if you have a choice between Ner Chanukah and Kiddush Hayoim, Ner Chanukah takes precedence because of Pursume Nisa, and every, we all asked, why is there no Pursume Nisa on Shabbos? Comes the Avnei Nezer, comes the Shvos Yaakov, says there's no Pursume Nisa on Shabbos. Who are, you, who are you spreading it to? When I make Kiddush, I make Kiddush for myself. When you make Kiddush, you make Kiddush for yourself. If we're all together, so we'll kill two birds with one stone, I'll be might see you. But there's no Indian of me saying Kiddush to you. Everyone makes Kiddush on their own. If we're all around the table, we're all there at the same time, fine. Baray Vam Hajas Melech. But Pesach, there's Pursume Nisa. How's that? There's a mitzvah, it's not enough to say it yourself. You must tell your children. You have to speak to your children. And if your children are not right, you have to tell your wife. And if your wife's not right, you have to tell yourself. Not you say it. You have to tell yourself. There's Pursume Nisa on Pesach. So what's the Kol Shikain of the, of the Magad Mishnah? The Kol Shikain of the Magad Mishnah, like Zach explained, is that even though there's Pursume Nisa by Pesach, there's more Pursume Nisa by Ner Hanukkah. Because by Ner Hanukkah, you're not only Mepharsim to the Bnei Besa, you're Mepharsim to the Tarmadim walking in the, in the Rosh Hashanah and the Persians walking in the Rosh and all the people going outside in the Rosh So really, there are three levels of Pursume Nisa. There are Shabbos, when you make Kiddush, there's no Pursume Nisa. You just say it and finish. There's no Indian of publicizing the miracle. There's no Indian of publicizing the miracle. You, you declare that Shabbos is holy. The second level is Dalit Koisos. Dalit Koisos, there's Pursume Nisa. To who? To your family. And the highest level is Pursume Nisa to the Rosh Hashanah, to the whole world. Therefore, the Ramam says like this. Says the Magad Mishnah, if the Rambam feels that you have to sell your clothing for Dalit Koisai, it's because of Pursume Nisa, Kol Shiken, you need to sell your clothing for, for Ner Chanukah. Why? Because the Pursume Nisa of Chanukah is on a higher madrega than Dalit Koisai. And what we really need to investigate is, why are we not Mepharsim, the miracle of Bria Soilam? Why is there no Pursume Nisa on Shabbos? Why don't we have a mitzvah to open up the window, to open up the door, and say, Hey, everyone, God created the world. That's what we do Hanukkah. We, we open up the shades, and we put the Ner Hanukkah on the window, and we say, Hashem makes miracles. That's what we do on Pesach. We declare to our families, Hashem makes miracles. If, as the Avnei Nezer asks, and the Shos Yaakov asks, the greatest miracle ever was Bria Soilam, why then are, is it not incumbent upon us to be mefarsim, the miracle of Riyas HaOlam? We should, you know, stand on the corner with signs, Shem created the world. No. We only, we only publicize that Shem bailed us out in the time of Hanukkah. He bailed us out in the time of Pesach. Why is that? What's the reason for that? Rabbi Yisai, the Ramam tells us in his last comments to Masech the Brachos, the Ramam says that whenever he has the opportunity to speak about Inyani Emuna, he always takes the opportunity and the advantage to do so. The Ramam writes very beautiful words in number 12, Ki yakar be'inai lelamed yisoid meha yisoidois yoiser mikomash alamadeo. More than anything the Ramam says I will teach you, what is more, most precious to me is Emuna Bashem. So if I ever have the opportunity to speak about Emuna, I'll always take advantage. But there are two aspects of Emunah. And there are two Yesoidos of Emuna. One Yesoid of Emunah is believing that Hashem created the world. And one Yesoid of Emunah is that Hashem is Mashkiach. What does that mean, Hashem is Mashkiach? What Hashem is Mashkiach is that every detail in life that happens to a person, every dollar that you make, and every success you have, and every failure you have, as major or minor as it may be, every compliment you get, every slight insult you get, anything whatsoever is not coincidence in the slightest. It's a di- exact gezerah menashem. The Rebbe Hashem measured out exactly what you need to get. These are the two Yisodei Hamuna. Hashem is boyrei, animamu Hashem, shabar is boyrei, hu boyrei, umanik. Boyrei umanik. But these two principles really complement each other and both are needed and both 
fuse together to form the principle that Hashem created and controlled. Therefore, the Rush writes, uh, we know the Rush wrote a Sefer, uh, Sefer Moser, that in the yeshivas today that follow Kelm, for example, in the Mirror Yeshiva, or in Lakewood, where their, their Rush Yeshiva were influenced from the Kelm Mahalach of Moser, happens to be, my Yeshiva is more from Slabotka, so the, they're not so into this Sefer. Not that, so it's not, certain Yeshivas focus on it more. The Archas Chaim of the Rush. The Rush wrote a Sefer, a very brief Divrei Moser. And the Rush writes about in, in Aleph Chavav, Levtoyach Bashem B'cholavavcha, to trust in Hashem with all your heart and to believe in His Hashgacha. Says the Rush, that by doing so, you'll be Mekayim in your heart, the Yichar Hashalim. When you believe that the eyes of Hashem scan the whole earth, and a person has to understand and believe, and we all believe it, but we don't really think about it. That not only does Hashem see every act we make, not only does Hashem see our hearts, which means Hashem sees our thoughts, not only does Hashem see our motivations, Hashem sees into the cloyers, the kidneys, which mean like this. Sometimes subconsciously, we ourselves are not in touch with what's really motivating us. With enough self-introspection, we would be able to summon up what's really motivating us. The Rebbe Hashem is probing even there. We all believe it, but we're not cognizant of it. But this is Yisai Dei HaMunah. Hashem created the world. He's mashgiach bifritei fratois, in every detail. Says the Rosh, listen to this. Mi she'enoi mamen asher hoitzei sicha me'eretz Mitzrayim. If you don't believe that Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. Now what did Hashem demonstrate when He took us out of Mitzrayim? Hashkach pratis. That Hashem could say, you guys, you stay behind. You guys drown in the sea. You Egyptian, you're really bad. You're going to float around and be tortured. You're mediocre bad. You're going to float a little faster. And you're okay, so you're going to sink with a painless death. And you Jews, you all go out except for the four-fifths that serve Rabbi Yazara. You, when you drink, you can have an Egyptian and a Jew drinking out of the same cup. For one, it's blood and one, it's water. What's that? Hashkocha Pratis. That Hashem is giving A, something, and B, something entirely different. If you don't believe that Hashem took you out of Mitzrayim, says Rosh, then you don't believe God created the world. In other words, in order to fully have Emunah and Hashem as creator, you have to have full cognizance and awareness that every detail that occurs in life is a Gezerah min HaShamayim. You see, unfortunately, as you are drugged by the narcotic called life, we tend to think, yeah, Hashem created the world, yeah. But obviously yeah, I'm successful because I, I do a good job. And, and the reason why I didn't do good is because I, I made a blunder. And the reason why I did this is because I had a brilliant idea. Of course Hashem creates the world and controls everything. But it's not real because we don't really feel that every step we take, Hashem is governing the Hashgacha Pratis. Says the Rush, if you don't accept Asher Hoytzei Sicha Eretz Mitzrayim, then the Anoichi Hashem Lekev is also lacking. The purpose of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was to demonstrate not only is Hashem the Boire and the Creator, but that His control, His specific guiding of the world, extends itself to every human being on the lowest level. The Ramban writes, you know, in Parshas Yisrael, where it says, Zach Hashem 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 it says over there, the reason to keep Shabbos is why? Because Hashem created the world in six days and He rested on the seventh. And if you look in Pashas Vaschanan, by the second Nasar Sadebrois, it says the reason to keep Shabbos is because Hashem took you out of Mitzrayim. So the Ramban asks, make up your mind, what is it? Is Shabbos Zecher Lamasei Bereshis? Or is Shabbos Zecher L'Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? And well, the truth is we say both in Kiddush. In Kiddush we say Zecher Lamasei Bereshis. We say Zecher L'Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The Ramban explains in Parshas Vaschanan. It's one principle. Because the Mitzrayim began to deny the fact that Hashem created the world. So Hashem said, you don't believe I created the world? Let me come in, let me step in, and override the system. And when you see someone who's able to override the system, then the only conclusion is, hey, who, who gave him the keys to override the system? 
Ah, oh, it must be he created the system. In other words, the concept Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim solidified and authenticated Briya Sa'ilam. It substantiated it. It, it. it established it. So really, the Ramban writes, Shabbos, Shabbos, which is the day that we commemorate Briya Sa'ilam, is Zecher Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Why? Because what established Briya Sa'ilam Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is Zecher Lamasei Bereshis. The two ideals go hand in hand. So one of the ancient Svarim on the Haggadah and on Chumash, the Sefer Masei Hashem of, from Rebbe Lezer HaRoyfei, who is a doctor, a great doctor, he writes, that why do we commemorate the day of the week? Why not the day of the month? He says, very simple. Because you have to understand why Hashem made the miracle that we tie the Egyptian God to our doorposts and the Egyptians didn't harm us. You know why Hashem made that miracle? Because until that point in time, every seventh day, when the Jews rested, the Mitzvah said, what are you doing, you lazy bums? And we would say, what do you mean? God created the world and He rested on the seventh. That's what we're doing today. The Mitzvah said, God created the world? What are you talking about? It's a Baba Maisa. Ha'olam Kadmoin. There always was a world. The Mitzrim undermined the concept of Shabbos. So the Rebbe Hashem Bedavka told them that on Shabbos you're going to take the Seh and you're going to tie it to your bed and they're going to recognize that even though they should really be slitting your throats, I'm going to protect you and I'm going to substantiate the concept of Shabbos. So the purpose of the miracle of the Godol, Shabbos HaGodol, was to elevate Shabbos, was to magnify Shabbos, was to be Megadel Shabbos, was to be Megadel Briyas Ha'olam, Be'inei Ha'olam, was to magnify, to elevate the concept that Shabbos represents in the world. The reason why it's called Shabbos HaGadol, because until then, Shabbos was cut on Be'inei Ha'olam. And after that miracle, Shabbos was Nizgadel Be'inei Ha'olam. Shabbos was elevated, Shabbos was magnified. The Maisa, the Sasemis writes in many places, in his drushes for Shabbos HaGadol, you have on your sheet over here, we'll just take a look very qu- quickly, Tafresh Lam and Ches, Tafresh Mem, Tafresh Mem Zayin, he writes, the reason why it's called Shabbos HaGadol is because, is because, on that great day, Shabbos, the concept of Briyas HaOilam was Nizgadel Be'inei HaOilam, it was elevated, it was magnified. Rabbi said, I must share with you, it's almost the to the Pesach, I'm going to be saying Hallel, at least, at least, Nine times. If you have a Nusach Ashkenaz, you can say Halal at least nine times. If you have a Nusach Svar, then you have another one in Shul. Actually, two more times. So we'll give you, a, we'll give you what? Eleven. eleven times. So Nusach Svar, eleven. Nusach Ashkenaz, nine. In any event, there's a parak in Tehillim. Hallelujah. Take a look at number 21. And I want to share with you the way the Malbim understands this parak in Tehillim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Avdei Hashem. Hallelujah, Hashem Hashem. Yehi Shem Hashem Mevoyrach. Me'at Taviyat Oilam. Mi Mizrach Shem Hashem Mevoyoy. Mohulo Shem Hashem. Rama Kogoyim Hashem. Al Hashemayim Kevoydoy. And we like to sing the words and we think we're, yeah, I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling what? What are you feeling? You have no idea what in the world you're talking about. Like most of Davening. Hashem is Hallel Hoida. Hallel Hoida. Hallel Hoida. Hallel Hoida. We'll sing a good tune here, a good tune there. Call it a day. You have no clue what you're doing. Sorry. Clueless. You need to know what the words mean. What are you, what are you doing? This Pasuk Hallel, this Pasuk Bracha, this Pasuk Sheva, God's great, He's wonderful, He's amazing, great. Wonderful. Just want to share with you the way the Malbim learns this parak. Is, Mamish, you say that you say this. The Malbim says like this. The Malbim says, the Goyim believe that Hashem created the world. The problem is, you know what their mistake is? Hashem created the world, and He's on vacation. He, like all great people, He delegates. Hashem has more important things to do. He's up in Shamayim, busy with the, the big people up there. That's what their kfira is. And He delegates this world to whatever, to Teva, to Malachim. The concept of Hallel is God's greatness. And even Goyim, they sing Hallel, Hallelujah, right? Goyim are very into Hallel. They'll stand in their churches and in their place of worship and they'll sway and they'll clap and they'll sing. Hallel, 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 hallel. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
because they understand God's majesty and His greatness. But their kafira is they don't believe that God comes down to this world and He decides whether your socks are going to be too tight or just right. And He decides whether you're going to have a dollar extra or a dollar and three cents extra. And He decides every detail whether you're going to have a little headache or a little bit more than a little headache. Every detail. Goyim just believe. Hallelujah. God's great up there in the heavens. But they don't believe in being Mavarech Hashem. Mavarech Hashem is that Hashem's Shefa extends itself to every detail down here on this world. So David HaMelech says, Hallelujah Abde Hashem, Hallelujah Hashem Hashem, yeah, Hallelujah is good. But you know what a Jew needs to do? Yehi Shem Hashem Mivarech. A Jew needs to be Mavarech Hashem. We need to acknowledge that every detail of our life is direct bounty from Hashem. <laughs> Then David Amar says, If you scan the scope of the world, every country in the world, they're all saying, Hallelujah. They all recognize Hashem's majesty. But here's the mistake of the Goyim. Ram al Goyim Hashem. To the Goyim, God's up there. He's Ram, He's majestic. He's up there in the heavens. Allah Shamayim Kavayda. His honor's in the heavens. They don't believe God is any. God decides whether I'm going to get a raise or not. Or. God decides whether I have a good dinner or God decides whether they're going to treat me nice at home or in shul or my neighbor. God is saying he has bigger things to worry about. To the Goyim Roma Ko Goyim Hashem. But you know what we say? Mi Kashem Eloikeinu. Who is like Hashem? Amagbi Lo Shaves. We say like this. Hashem is so majestic. And to Hashem the truth is, there's no difference between heaven and earth. He's way above the heavens as well. But you know what the Rebbe Hashem does? Hamashpili Lirais Vashamayim Uva Aretz Amalbam says. Hashem lowers himself to know intimately the, lo- the heavens and every detail that happens on earth. And you know how far it goes? Mikimi me afar dal. You can have a poor man who's wallowing in the dust. The Rebbe Hashem, he's there trying to lift him up. You can have someone even lower, even lower than the dust is the garbage heaps. Me ashvois. You can have someone in the garbage heaps. Yorim evyon. Evyon is even more poor than a dal. And Hashem could raise the person up. To raise him up to be with important people, not stop important people. Nedive Amoy, the most important people. You could have someone who the doctors say, you know what? They can't have a child. So Hashem's going to worry to get involved? Yes, that's all Hashem worries about. Moshivi Akeras Habayis. Hashem could take a woman who's an Akara and in a minute. Hashem can make her a happy mother. That's the difference between a Yid and a Goy. A Goy, yeah, hallo, hallelujah, Roma, kol Goyim Hashem, Hashem's up in the heavens. But for the Yid, mi Hashem aloikeinu, mashpili lirois v'ashamayim v'aretz. Goyim believe Hashem created the world. Everyone believes Hashem created the world. Rabbi Hanan says, belief that Hashem created the world is obvious and evident as long as you're not a blithering fool. Sorry to use the expression, that's what he says. He says Rabbi Hanan, in the name of the Chavis Havavis, if you would go into a farm and you saw a water mill in the river. Oh wow, what a coincidence! How the wind just put together this round circle that the water is pushing. Only a shaito would say such a thing. Imagine you went into a desert. Just a simple question, we're almost done. You went into a desert... And you see in the sand the letter A. And you have a thousand dollars in your pocket. Are you putting it down that somebody traced the letter A or did the wind do it? I'm putting my money down. So are you. How would the wind blow exactly the letter A? Okay, you're a little hesitant. What if it said um, Shabbos Hagadol Drosha, six o'clock. What if it said that? I'm putting down a million dollars that the w- didn't happen on its own. So are you. No, but, right? What, an animal road, Shabbos again? If you drop ink from here onto a pa- paper, and imagine if you came, you saw on a paper, it said, 
Hello, how you doing? Have a great evening. And I tell you, how much money are you going to bet that the ink didn't fall, someone wrote it? Of course, you're going to put down all your money. Without intelligent design, nothing intelligent could happen. Says Rabbi Hanan, Emuna that Hashem created the world is obvious. It's obvious. So why don't people believe? Not because they're fools, because they choose not to. They choose, it's like anything. You know, people, why don't you come learn? They choose not to. Choose not. There are certain things that are self-evident. And if you're not doing it, it's a free world, free choice in this world. Says Rabbi Hanan, you don't have to tell and convince anyone that Hashem created the world. It's obvious. He writes like this. Says Rabbi Hanan, Everybody acknowledges God created the world. Rabbi Yisai says Rabbi Rucham Oshin, that is the reason why there's no Indian of Pursume Nisa on Shabbos. To stand on the street corner and say, Everyone, God created the world. No kidding. Everybody knows that. Goyim know that. Even Goyim believe. Hallelujah. Goyim sing hallelujah. There's no reason to have Pursume Nisa on Shabbos. But what Goyim do not accept is Ashkach HaPratis. They don't believe the Yibbana Shalom is mashpili liroi spashamayim of Aretz. They don't believe the Yibbana Shalom is being goizer on every small detail of our lives. That's why there's Pursume Nisa on Pesach. That's why there's Pursume Nisa on Hanukkah. No requirement to be mefarsim the miracle of Shabbos. There is a big requirement to be mefarsim the concept of Hashkacha Pratis. You know, we make an Asher Yatsar. An Asher Yatsar is a bracha on the low, lowest function of man. Man ridding themselves of their waste. Right? It's the most base human function. Interesting, we say in the bracha, and the, growing, the Vilna Gain points this out, what do we say in Asher Yatsar? We say, Varavai, Nekavim, Nekavim, Chalulim, Chalulim, Hashem, you made cavities, you made holes in our body. Goloi v'yadua lefnei chisei chavaydeh. It's revealed and known before your thro- throne of glory. You know this is the only place in Davening that we invoke the thro- throne of glory? What are we bringing the throne of glory into the, the Beis HaKisei for? Here you're saying Hashem that you could use a facility and you're saying it's known before your throne of glory? Says the Vilna Gun, that's exactly the point. Don't think that the Rebbe Shalom sitting in Shamayim, there are certain things, you know, I'll delegate that to the cleaner, to the sanitary, uh, sanitation department. Don't, don't think Yerbam Shem has malachim. He says, you know, I'm not interested in that. I'll, you know, your digestive system and your different tracks, I'll leave it to others. No. Even the Yerbam Shem sitting on his kisei hakavoid, there's nothing more important to him, there's nothing more involved in, than even the lowest function of man. That's Yisoyde ha Yisoyde. So just we'll end with this. It says the Bar Yosef of Yosef Tzvi Salant. Yaakov Avinu, he's about to encounter Esav. The Pasuk says, Vayivasar Yaakov Levadoi. What do Chazal say? He went back for Pachim Ketanim, for small jugs. And Chazal said, you know why he went back for the small jugs? Because Tzadikim Chavivim Lehem Amoinam Yosar Mi Gufeyam. Tzadikim love their money more than their bodies. Pella, really? I didn't know that. Tzadikim love, why did Tzadikim love money so much? And here, Yaakov, you forgot a pot. I mean, give it. hey, Rabbi, get, get on with life. You know, you left the pot. Move on. No, get over it, Rabbi. No, Yaakov, you couldn't get over it. He had to go back. He left a pot on the other side of the river. And then he, he struggles with the sorry Shal Esav, with the angel of Esav, and they wrestle. And Chazal say the dust reached where? Kisei HaKavai. What's going on here? Says the Bar Yosef. You know why Yaakov Avinu loved his money so much? It's not he didn't love money. Yaakov Avinu had such conviction that every detail of his life was de- designated and designed specifically to the Rebbe Hashem, that the Rebbe Hashem wants him to have this pot. To him, that means Yaakov Avinu is Makabel. That means God Almighty decreed that I need this pot. I don't know why. He knows better than me. I need this. That's all. It's my pot. It doesn't come from, a, it's not a coincidence. It means the Rebbe Hashem decreed that I need this pot for my perfection in life. Therefore, Yaakov Avinu says, Who am I to say, Ah, eh, my Zayn. Rebun Shalom Be'ashkoch HaPratis wanted me to have even this dollar, even this 50 cents. I have to go back to get it. 
all of a sudden, the smell of Esau said, what? Okay, Hashem created the world. But this principle is so dear to you that Hashem governs every detail of your life. That was the struggle. That was the fight. The Sar Shalizah were trying to get, fight this principle that every detail of life is governed by the Rosh And the fight reached all the way to where? The Kisei HaKavayit. Why the Kisei HaKavayit? Because the Sar Shalizah said, you think that a God sitting on the Kisei HaKavayit, He's interested in your path. And Yaakov Inu says, yeah, there's nothing that is too trivial for the Yavon Shem even sitting on the Kisei HaKavayit. And that's the Machoikas between Yaakov and Esau, between Chal Yisrael and the Goyim. The Goyim says, Roma ko Goyim Hashem. Chal Yisrael says, No, mi ka Hashem aloikeinu amagbi lo shaves hamashpili lirois pashamayim v'ores. And this is what we give over to our children. There's no pursuing Nisa on Shabbos. Everybody knows about Bria Sa'ilam. The idea to inculcate in ourselves and to give over to our children is Hashkach HaPratis. But Hashkach HaPratis on the smallest detail. And that is why there are two days of the year that we have to guard it. Because they're not just mitzvahs. They're the found, fundamental principles of Judaism, of Briyas HaOlam, of Hashkach HaPratis. We say, Shmartem es HaShabbos, Shmartem es HaMatzos. V'shom Rubenei Yisrael es HaShabbos, U'shmartem es HaVoyda HaZeh, Shomar es Chodesh HaAviv. You need Shmira, you need to guard these principles because they're bombarded by the ideals of the outside world. That's why Pesach is called Shabbos. These are the two days that fuse together to promote the two Yisoidos. Anoichi Hashem Aleikecha, Asher Hoytzei Sicha, Me'eretz Mitzrayim. Shkoyach everyone for coming. Wish you all a early Chag Kasher V'Sameh. Shkoyach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.